So the recording is in progress. So you'll need to do your introduction again, please, and state clearly the uh, way to your website so that our audience can follow up. But the ball is in your court. Thank you so much. Okay. My my web, website is www.asaponline.org.ng. And your name? We need your we need your introduction again. Oh, the introduction again. Okay, I'm Islamia Tolaito Shudis, the national president of childhood education practitioners. I've been in this NGO for a very long time, almost 18 years working as an NGO. I started as it, 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 um, I started working as a teacher. I have a school. When I later, I set up this NGO and started working with the school as well as the NGO. Then in 2000, was it not? Around 2004, I was invited by ministry after registering with them. And I, I went to University of Warwick University to make a presentation on early childhood education in Nigeria, way forward. Was it? No child rights, child rights and early childhood provisions in Nigeria. So the document was highly distributed when I came back because it was accepted. And during that program, I was invited, I was introduced to one of the two members that came from NAEYC for the program and they love my presentation. There and then they invited me for NAECT conference in California. I went for the conference and I was asked to serve on the international, um, international conference. So they picked Canada, they picked Nigeria and some other countries, which I was among those they picked for. So I spoke in. Later, I joined, I was introduced to join NAEYC because it happened to be the largest early childhood organization. I believe in the whole world because if we, uh, if we go for their conferences, always factful. Anyway, I started organization and with the experience I had in the school and, the, and even before that I have over 70 children in my school on Pauli students in school that I gave scholarship. They were coming to school free of charge and it's a private school. And somebody came to me that if you can be running this school, you are running the school on charity. Look at it. How can I have over 70 children on scholarship? I don't know it was education times. That was how the man became the national president of Association for Childhood Education Practitioners. He interviewed me. I don't even know he was trying to interview me. And I invited him to our office. I gave him files of all the children that saw He was highly impressed. And he said, how will I support this? I said, I call friends at times. And he said, how do you, how do you give them? I said, some of them. The moment they lose any of their parents that is sending them to school, they will sit at home. They don't want to go to school again. And you will have to visit them and call them back to school. They will say they don't have money. What will I do? So the next thing is to put them there. Then when the time comes, we established, I went for a conference in University of London under OMEP because I'm a member of OMEP under OMEP, World Organization on Early, Child, on Early Childhood Education. So we went to University of London. I saw Professor Otala. Professor Otala invited all of us that came from Africa for a meeting and said, how come that you people that are from Africa, you, are, you, 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 you come on the platform of one organization, you realize that 
the organization you are coming on this platform is an international organization. If you have a program, other countries will have the same program. If you send your own, if other countries send their own, they might speak from other countries if you don't qualify. But if you have an indigenous organization, it will help a lot to promote the culture, to promote so many things. It's just that I try to limit this slide because we have a, a, a lot, the International Day, uh, um, the African Child Day. We have been anchoring it for Lagos State Ministry of Education for over 13, 13 years. We are the one that is always giving them all the uh, um, answers, cultural show, every other thing. Sometimes speak that. So it is not an easy program. But because of the passion I have for children, it makes me go on well with it. So after the program, after my presentation, and I send the presentation to Ministry of Federal Ministry of Women Affairs and other agencies, even the National Assembly, we send it there that we must domesticate child rights. It is important. We, we took an, a very strong advocacy that this must be done. Look at the way the children are being treated. We must, at the end of the day, they invited me to join the group that send the AU reports on child rights. I still have the document in my office. It was, at the, it was during that program that we suggested that we should have ministry for a child, we should have child director in all ministries who will supervise the activities of all NGOs. The role of director child in the ministry is to supervise the activities of all NGOs. And I keep on saying that if they dispute it, I still have the document. I, I don't throw away documents. It's a document of over 14 years. I kept it in my office. It was there that we said, we should have children parliaments. It was there that we said, NACRAN should be a body that will monitor the activities of child focus NGO. And I just had NACRAN after a couple of years. I said, ah, let me join this organization now. I went to where they were holding their meeting. I had even forgotten about we recommending that we should have NACRAN there. Anyway, we just said we should have a body that we coordinate all the activities. It was there we brought out the name NACRAN. At the end of the day, I was asked, we, we cast the vote there at the Ministry for Women Affairs. After the vote, I was elected as the Lagos State Coordinator. I, they, 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 later, they, I was appointed as a member of the Implementation Committee on Child Rights. So during that period, we were working seriously on the investigation of child rights. We tried to talk to so many organizations, we brought in so many groups so that the government will be able to accept it. And we are happy that at oh, least- Thank you so much for that introduction. Could you begin the presentation now? Oh, the presentation now, okay. Just a minute. Stephanie, you might need to oh, proceed to the next page. slide. Yeah, when, yeah, every time you need the page turned, say next page. So we're on the cover page, the role of Association for Childhood Education Practitioners in the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs in Nigeria. So just say next page, next page. Islam, can you see the presentation yes, yourself I'm, as yes. well? I've seen it. Yeah, so just tell Stephanie yeah. when you need to change to the next page. Okay, okay, I've seen it. I've seen the, I've seen the presentation. 
the role of Association for Childhood Education Practitioners, ASEP, in the implementation of sustainable development goals in Nigeria. Presented to Indigenous Global Network by Tanya Olaiton Ushuti, myself, my honorable self. Nigeria, like many countries committed to the implementation of United Nations Agenda 2030, known as the Sustainable Development Goal, which we are adopted 2015. Successive national medium-term plan have aligned national development objectives, such as on education, health, and on environment to the SDG. Federal Ministry of Budget and Planning is, at the, is the apex body of SDG delivery process. There's a special advisor that's resident in the office of president and the 36 states have all constituted their delivery process. Introduction of ASEP and SDGs. As an education NGO, ASEP works as focused primarily on SDG4, which mandates countries to ensure that all girls and boys complete free primary education schooling by 2030. The goal and all aims to provide equal access to affordable vocational training, eliminate gender and wealth disparities, and achieve universal access to high quality education. ASEP works in line with its mission to advocate for children and youth and ensure that governments deliver on their obligation to educate future learners. ASEP focus on education in line with UN Sustainable Development Goals. ASEP mode of engagement in order to support the implementation of SDG on education, ASEP engages with government, private sectors, and development partners to improve the education quality, access, and reduce costs. The key mode of engagement are as follows. Training and development of teachers for improved training outcome in children. Humanitarian activities and support for poor parents. Partnership with NGOs, governments, and private sectors. Training of training to transition to online training. Participation in international fora. Training and development of teachers to improve learning outcome. In 2004, Nigerian Institute of International Education, NIIE, contacted ASEP to coordinate a program on training for teachers from the 36 states of the Federation. Ms. Ola Wills and Professor Patnai and a group of educators, I should, I think I should, I should remember Ayoluwa Betts among them, mm -hmm. took a sabbatical from California to direct the program. During, during, the, during their one month stay in Nigeria, ASAP mobilized participation from across Nigeria, took care of the venue, for the program and accommodation of the experts. The program was highly successful, contributing to the training and development in handling children and improvements in handling children and the use of local materials in curriculum delivery.
mode of en ASAP mode of engagement in order to support the implementation of SDG4 on education, ASAP engages with government private sectors and development partners to improve education quality, access and reduce costs. The key mode of engagement is as follows. Training and development of teachers for improved learning outcome in children. Humanitarian activities and support for poor parents. Partnership with NGOs, governments and private sectors. Transitioning to online learning. Participation in international fora. Sorry. You have passed through this. Program for out of school children. In 2017, ASAP provided specialized training for teachers handling out of school children and street children in habitation of hope, a camp for street children in Mowe, Ogun State. The training provided teachers with the knowledge to deal with the special needs of out of school children and to properly integrate them into the society. ESAP is assisting government to reduce the issue of out of school, out of school children. ESAP regularly organized program to take children out of school, out of street, and hand them over to SUBEB, State Universal Basic Education Board, the agency in charge of primary education, to enroll them into proper schools. Increasing diversity in learning. ESAP supported the publication of sign language posters for schools for speaking fingers organization. I must emphasize on this. In our society, a good number of children, when they see these children that cannot speak, the way they relate with them, it's as if it's a disease or something. But we now, I went for speaking fingers because speaking finger is one of the organizations that we work with. She has been trying a lot in the area of inclusive education. So I went for a program and discussed with, try to highlight to the children, the normal children, that these posters we have made for you, we, prop we purposely made it for you because it's going around your school to let you know that the, ch the children with disability are equal like you. This is how you communicate with them. Not that you will be communicating with them in a different way. And the children, we are all happy to see the way the sign, the, 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 the sign language was very effective on, on them. A thousand posters and pocket, even we made pocket cards for them to take out when going which will help them when they see all these children. Humanitarian activities. ASAP engaged in a wide range of humanitarian activities aimed at ensuring that children arrive in school with the equipment they need to succeed. In recent years, ASAP has implemented annual programs aimed at providing school implements as follows distribution of bags. Some children, when you see them outside with chatter bags, chatter shoes, you will look, are you going, to, are you, are you going somewhere else you are, you are going to school? So we give them school bags, we give them shoes, we make them happy. We give them and other things. Yes, I 
also very active during the COVID-19 lockdown. Actively supporting poor families that had, that had limited access to necessities of life. Our COVID intervention program focused on free food and meals in poor neighborhoods. On every other day, we make sure we give them food. We have a lot of people that are going around in the implementation of this. Distribution of provision of so liquid soap and, and sanitizers. Distribution of banners and schools in low income neighborhoods. And we don't limit the hand bills to English alone. We make it in the three major Nigerian languages, Aousa, Igbo, and Yoruba. So when we go to one of the areas in, uh, that is predominantly for Aousas, and we gave them this hand bills, they were so happy. They said, this is the period that they now know what COVID-19 is, what they're supposed to do. So I'm happy for this. Then cash transfer to indigent people. A lot of, a lot of, especially my office area. I am, our office is located in an area that you cannot do without doing humanitarian work because either they come and knock your door or you see them on the street before you enter your office. So definitely you have the list of so many of them. So a good number were given cash transfer, some we are given on their hands. All these activities we are made possible through the support of our partners. SDG on health, sanitation and environment. Free dental checkup and eye screening during our annual health week. During our annual health week, we invite professionals, doctors, hospitals, clinics. They give us that support. And we do the follow-up. We give the children the write-up on whatever. And whatever we can do during that period, we make sure we implement it for them. In the area of water and sanitation, during, I think I will collect, the, the Global Hand Washing Day. ASAP was called upon by Ministry for Rural Development, uh, Ministry for Rural Development and UNICEF. So we were the one that anchored go, the first Global Hand Washing Day in Nigeria. Before the Global Hand Washing Day, I took a trip to all schools that I want to investigate all how how the children are washing their hands, which water are they using, what are they, and everywhere. I could see that there was a good number of schools don't have running water. That must be about 10 years ago when they started, or eight years ago when they started global hand washing. I now look at it that what we are going to do is to invite some of the schools and give them a tank with tap underneath that will make hand washing very easy. The cleaner can fetch water on the on the on the on the big buckets and tanks that we gave them, and then they will use it for washing their hands when they finish from the field after after playing. And it went on very well. A good number of schools collected these tanks that they were even up till now they are still calling us, that won't you give us, over the years that you have given us, you want to give us again? I said, we will give you when the fund is available. During that period, we launched School Environmental Health Club. We went to different schools and we are happy Ministry of Environment was with us during the launching. The booklet is in our office for the launching of the School Environment Health Club. Partnership and engagement 
local partners. ESA programs have been strongly supported by wide network of public institution, multilateral, multilateral and organizations, private philanthropies and NGOs. These all contributes to the financially and materially to support, they all contribute financially and materially to support our programs. Um, uh, uh, education institution, Unilag University of Lagos, Janike, formerly Adenino Okusoya College of Education. Michael Otedola University. Government agencies, UBEC, SUBEC, Ministry for Youth and Social Development. Private philanthropy and NGOs. Alpha SETA organization. They are very, they, they have been supporting us in the area of VAT. When we, when I told Alpha SETA that these bags we have been so, uh, distributing to children that you won't believe that we have distributed close to 7,300 bucks to, and the idea came when I went for CSW 56, United Nations Conference for Women, because National Association for the uh, uh, NACRAN, National Council for Child Rights Advocate, which I am the Lagos State Coordinator, we ensure we had a consultative status with United Nations, ECOSOC. And every year, we must participate in any of their conferences. So when we went for that, I met a lady by name Lauren Bush. She in fact, she took picture with me. We had a lengthy discussion on how she was distributing school bags. I said, I must replicate this when I get back home. When I got back home, I decided that the, my first assignment is to start giving children school bags. Because when you see some, some we use ordinary nylon bags to carry books to school, ordinary bags to carry books to school. I said, I'm going to do this. And I started it. Having distributed over 7,000 bags to schools, Alpha Zeta came in to support the program because I said by 2030, I want to make sure that I also distribute a million bags if possible. He said, ah, Am I going to do it? I said, By God's grace, we shall do it. Maybe you came in, you said you are going to assist us. And she has been assisting us. Since 2012, the organization has been assisting us, Alpha Seta organization. Ashop Solution came in as well to assist. And they too have been assisting us in the distribution of this bag. They will give us the bags, supply it to our office, and we'll be very happy. At a time when they were being too expensive on their own side, I told them, this is the amount they make it for us. Contact this man that makes it for us to do it. It will be cheaper. Learning, learning, uh, learn. Learn, learning empowerment response network. In fact, the organization too has been supporting us in the area of books, literatures for children. Partnership and engagement, global and international partners. These are partners with global and international organizations to implement programs relating to childhood education and children advocacy. United Nations Education and Scientific Cultural Organization, UNESCO. In 2006, I was at the Aram table where I made a nice presentation 
That was years back. And they, they were highly impressed with the presentation. United Nations Information Center, World Forum Foundation. World Forum Foundation has been one of the organizations that even went to the extent of ad I'm advising us during the Honolulu conference. I wasn't there, but I was there to attend the Honolulu conference because they know the actual that period. So in our advisor, advice came from our members during that program that why can't we have a child focused organization in Nigeria? When they came back, they approached me. They said, we want you to be one of our board of trustees because we know your worth and we know what you are doing in the society. We, we, can, we just want to, in fact, one of them said, she can only be a member of the board of trustees if I'm also a member of the board of trustees. So I said, it's a call, I must obey you. So I became a member of trustees of Foundation for Promotion of Early Childhood Care Development in Nigeria. When you open World Forum's site, you will find it there. And it has been going on. We mobilize support. We get members that will attend their conferences. Right now, if not because of our own conference coming up in July, I'm also supposed to attend World Forum conference. National Association for the Education of Young Children. I have said a lot during my initial presentation. When I went to present, when I went to present a paper on early childhood education in California at IH Regency Hotel, and I was on the um, international board to discuss on early childhood education in Nigeria. So, they introduced me to national association. And ever since then, I've been very active. I've been, been attending their conferences, and they were happy. The last one they had in, in Washington, another one is coming up in Washington in November. The one they had in Washington 2018, was it 18 or 17? I was there with the head of Head of, head of um, with the permanent secretary and the commissioner, Ministry for Youth and Social Development in Nigeria, Lagos State, who is now the head of service. I want to converse for the next conference so that because he attended the last one and he was highly impressed. That is a is a program that just should attend, should always go for because they learn a lot. And I'm and I'm giving global international, I am giving my own support to the organization as well. Unity Learning Network. Distribution of school supplies. The key private donors that finance it, I have already said it. Then we had International Day of Girl Child. Every year we were doing it with Ministry for Women Affairs. But this year we decided that let us, let us do it. Now, we had it at the SUBEB, a good number of programs. Because for your program to really have, to be very effective, you must be able to collaborate with local governments, the states, the CDAs, CDAs are community association within different development association. You must be able to collaborate with them because through them, you will know 
those that are okay and those that need help and those that you want to so that your, your your program can be very effective so we had it with through little about three years ago before covid we had it with lagos island local government we have a series of programs I'm happy the strength is still going on there. Then transition to online learning. ASAP is working with educators and providing support for transition to online learning. It's very important, especially at this period. This COVID, we are happy that COVID is leaving us. We pray that it doesn't come back again. But there is one thing he brought into our own society that I'm happy about, and that is the online learning. A good number of people ate going online. But now it's made compulsory. Lagos State distributed tablets to all the teachers that they just have to be ready to work online. Some of them are working online. And we had a collab we ASAP also rolled out private ASAP private expo network with e-expo. A global network to education in Nigeria. Presently, we are trying to work on other schools and then enter into a very good memorandum of understanding with e-expo as well, so that it can be very effective. Because we don't want to do something halfway. We want something that once we start doing it and we see the effect, we don't want to leave it. Next slide. Mem continuous training of ASAP members. I think I've touched this, have I? Members of ASEP are educators and professionals who understand the importance of continuous training and education in order to keep a base of development. Therefore, they regularly attend conferences, both national and international. They engage with governments and the private sectors. Several members have attended international conferences with Government officials, yes, we have, and private sector, private school teachers. At the first roundtable conference held at the University of Lagos Education Auditorium, Chairman of ASAP Academic Advisory Board, Emeritus Professor Pai Obaya, gave the keynote address. Also, the attendance, we are all. We have 14 other professors and delegates from different parts of the country, Subeb, Ubeg, and not only, not only Lagos State, um, Subeb, from Oyo, Opu, Imo State, they also came from Abuja. The Ubeg officials, they came from Abuja as well. Networking and conferences improve interaction among members. Because this was this picture was during our end of year, um, end of year program and recognition of educationists in our society. We don't give awards all the time. We only give once we, people we identify. Ever since we gave this award, we have not, because we try to study those that we give awards. To. And these are beautiful members there. ASAP work has been recognized. If you check our website, you will see all the awards we have received, appreciated by various organizations, including UNESCO Office for Nigeria and ECOWAS. Thank you very much for listening to me. So is this the end of the presentation then?
this is the end of my presentation. Then Thank Stephanie, you very could, much for could you could you go back to the first slide to show the contact okay. information? This is certainly okay. a very comprehensive presentation. And I'm so very glad okay. we were able to record it all. When she gets yeah. back to the first slide, I'm going to stop the recording so that we can have this as a complete presentation. Just a moment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much for, for doing this presentation.